delicious venison jerky. All right, guys, welcome back to the channel here. So tonight, I'm gonna be showing you the best deer venison jerky recipe in the world. <laughs> so if you've been watching my channel long enough, you've probably seen uh, Cody in a few of my videos. He was my best friend growing up all through middle school, high school, everything. Um, and his dad always used to make this beef jerky recipe. Nobody in my family, immediate family, really hunted that much, so we didn't really get deer meat or anything like that. So when his dad or someone in their family shot a deer, you always knew you'd get a few pieces of jerky um, in, the, in the fall and the winter after they harvested the deer. So I've had a bunch of venison jerky before, and this recipe is my, by far my favorite. I don't know if it's just because I had it when I was younger with Cody's dad, or I don't know, it's just really, really good. And Cody uh, sent the recipe to me a couple of years ago, and I made it, and turned out exactly the way I remember it. So this year I harvested a doe myself. I need to tell you folks, but she didn't go 20. So we're gonna make that beef jerky today. I'm gonna show you how to do it. It's super simple, really good. And I do have permission from Cody to post this. He did give me a consent to go ahead with it. His exact words were, everybody deserves to eat delicious jerky. So I will post the recipe down in the description below so you guys can get that printed off, whatever you need. But we're gonna go over it right now. All right, so. Uh, we're gonna put the meat in after, but we need to crack open the Lechoy. Real deal, Lechoy soy sauce. We don't mess around with Kiko Man, we get the Lechoy. I'm gonna take off that little nipple on the end. Trust me, let's build some trust. You wanna take off the nipple on the end. So we need a whole cup of this. It's a lot, but you need it. One cup of lechoy. These measurements don't need to be exact. They're just kind of rough. So, you know, tailor it to however you want. But this is, I'm just kind of showing you guys what is needed for the recipe. So, take our brown sugar. Also, we're gonna be using this Mora knife here. This is the companion knife. Got this off, uh, got this from Fowler's Makery and Mischief website. I'll link it down below. It's a very, very affordable knife. I think it's like 20 bucks. It's super sharp, nice hunting knife. So we'll be using that to cut our meat up, but I'm also going to cut the bag open with this. So we need a cup of light brown sugar. Yes, sir. One eighth of a cup Worcestershire sauce. Again, don't really need to measure this that accurately. Just kind of wing it. And there we go. Then we're going to take our liquid smoke here and add four capfuls. This stuff is concentrated and it really gives it that nice smoky flavor that I really remember. We need a half a tablespoon of garlic powder, half a tablespoon of onion powder. Just did those backwards, but that's okay. Half a tablespoon cayenne pepper. And you can add more pepper if you like it a little spicier like that. Just stir all that up nice. Now we're gonna take a deer steak here. I took this out of the freezer oh, around noon so it should be still kind of firm which makes it actually a little bit easier to cut into small pieces. You just want to cut them as thin as, you, as thin as you can. This recipe says cutting them into 1 8 inch wide slices but really the thing you want to get down is you want to have them all the same thickness so they all finish and cure at the same time so you don't have some that are like not done and some that are way overdone because they're different sizes. Nice thin pieces like that. I didn't use both of those packages. I kept there was two steaks in each package there, so I got about two and a half steaks right here. And uh, I'm gonna eat the other one for dinner tomorrow night, so we left that one in the fridge. The recipe says to marinate this for 45 minutes, so you can do that, but the last time I did it, I did it overnight. I didn't quite do it 24 hours, but we're gonna put it in right now. It's about 7.30 at night, and uh, in the morning, probably like 9, 10 o'clock, we'll put this in the dehydrator and 
Yes, sir. Okay, I'll set it right here. I'm sure I'll get some questions as to what that is. Anyways, we'll catch you guys in the morning when we get ready to dry this stuff out. All right, guys, so it's the next morning here. We took the jerky out of the fridge. It's got a nice dark color to it now. <clears throat> I'm gonna load this up into the dehydrator. Now you can do this in an oven or a food dehydrator. The food dehydrator is just easier for me. You just kind of set it and then it does its thing. And I'll link this one down in the description below if you guys are looking for one. Cause he's gonna be drippy. You want to give some. You want to leave space in between the pieces so they can get air circulation going in between them all and it just takes less time to to dry them all out anyways you get the point here I'm gonna go ahead and just finish loading this up alright so we got it we only needed three trays here this last tray was kind of all the smaller pieces that were on the bottom of that dish but um, now all we do is set this bad boy right on top set it on Hi, I put it on 160. It actually tells you right here if you're doing meat, fish, or jerky, put it on 160. So we crank it up. It's going right now. I can't really tell you an exact time of how long this is going to take, but it'll take a few hours, four to six to eight hours, but we'll uh, catch you on the back end of that and I'll let you know how long it took. Every half hour to hour or so, you should take the trays out and switch them around. So the one on the bottom should go on the top, the one on the top should go on on the middle and you know work it work them down um, so they get uh, even coverage there we'll check back with you guys in a few hours and see how that stuff turned out okay I think we are done let's test a piece of this here let's see it's pretty dry in there kinda just breaks right off nice and dry this one's definitely done here and see how dry it is on the inside when we bend it. So that's how you can tell. Yep, looks good to me. All right, let's take this off of here and try it out. All right, so here it is. We've got a nice plate of jerky here. All right, so let's pick a piece here. We'll try her out. Take this one right here. Looks pretty good. Mmm. Yep, that is good. That took me about seven hours to dehydrate that to where I have it right now. Uh, if you wanted to, you could use a food saver and you know do that, put it in the fridge, it'll last a lot longer. Put it in the freezer, you can get probably over a year out of it before it um, probably isn't any good. But this stuff, I'm gonna bring this stuff ice fishing when we go this weekend. And uh, probably a lot of that's gonna be gone, so. So I hope I did Reggie's jerky recipe justice here. Um, it tastes just like when he used to make it when I was a kid. And uh, I just wanted to share that with you guys because it's a, it's a pretty good easy recipe to do. You can do it right at home. Let me know if you guys have a similar recipe to that down in the comments. Uh, be interested to see what you guys do to make jerky. Um, and if you guys are going to try this recipe, let me know how you like it. So like I said, we're going to start ice fishing here real soon. So uh, thanks for watching guys, hit that subscribe button, the thumbs up button, and we'll catch you guys in the next video. Coming up with the game plan to switch this fan around so we can get the heat dispersed through this little cabin we got, this little 10 by 10 shack. We'll get it if it takes every cent you got. <laughs> you got old rugged Reginald standing up on the seat. <laughs> Look like you see it. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna grind him. Find him and grind him.